Welcome my good students to this session of management accounting and that topic that you are looking at in the previous session that is marginal and absorption but subtopic is application of marginal costing. Still remember my name is Mr. Aringo. Remember in our previous session we dealt with break even point. We looked at a concept where you tackle the break even point but in that case on aspect of determining the sales you are using what the fixed cost of a CM. I want us to look at a different concept of break even point. This concept will assist you or rather it will be a summary on various concepts that you can be tested on break even point. I want you to be very very keen listen to each and every step which will give you a guide in handling any question for the same. So in this case I want us to look at our illustration question and that illustration question should come from our past paper which was tested in June 2013, question number 3. The concept still is break even point, but you are given a different perspective of the same. So, in that question, we are told that Agnes Casco and Peter Poha decided to venture into the same business in the year 2012. They sell, they sell the same type product in the same type of market. They are providing the following budgeted income statement for the year ended, uh, for the year ending 30 June 2014. I'm given Agnes' business. I'm given Peter's business. We have the component of the sales, variable costs, the fixed cost. Then required here, the examiner wanted you to determine number one, the break-even point of each business, and number two, the sales volume at which each business will earn a profit of 20,000 or rather 20 million. Remember, my good students, the moment you've seen this question, you shouldn't be afraid. Maybe a person will ask, I'm not, I'm not given the selling price per unit, or rather, I'm not given the variable cost per unit. That surely be a hindrance for you to leave that question. Remember, we noted that we had various concepts on break-even point. To determine the break-even point in sales, and to determine the break-even point in units. Like, if you note not very well here, the examiner has specified, or rather he has just stated, you determine the break-even point of each business. Suppose you are not given any form of units. Please forget the break-even point in units. You are going to determine your break-even point in value. That if you are not given what? Either selling price per unit, or you are not given what? the variable cost per unit. So, come to this question. I'm given two people, Agnes, and the other person was who? The other person was Peter. Business. I'm given Peter and I'm given what? Agnes, business. So, for Agnes, business, I saw that I'm having a sales. My sales value, that was uh, 600 Peter business, my sales value was 600, still the same on aspect of sales. But variable cost, it varied. I'm having for 80 here for Agnes and for Peter, I'm given 400. So at uh, my fixed cost, I was given fixed cost for Agnes, I'm given a figure of 60,000. I'm having 140,000. So that our total for forty five hundred and forty thousand on the same. So our budgeted profit in this case, our budgeted profit, budgeted profit. I was given a figure of sixty and sixty. That was our budgeted profit. So remember here, yeah, the examiner, the first thing he wanted us to do is to determine what? The break-even point. One, the examiner wanted you to determine what? The break-even point for the businesses. For the businesses. So here, the clue is, or rather the trick is, I'm not seeing anywhere where I'm given the sales in units. I'm not seeing a place where I'm given the variable cost per unit but we've been given entirely the total cost and total revenue of the same. And you're asked to determine the break-even point. What should ring in your mind? The first thing is how to determine break-even point. 
but remember this time you are doing what in value we had two methods of determining the break even point in value the first method we had fixed cost of our contribution margin times selling price and the other point you have fixed cost over cs ratio these are the two methods that you can use to determine your break even point in value like in the first scenario to determine the break even point in value i need to have the selling price per unit but in this question you are not given the selling price per unit but what you are given is the total sales so in that case the best method that i can use is this method the break even point whereby i need to have my fixed cost over cs ratio so having that case come to analyze our question was i given the fixed cost i'm dealing with the two businesses and that is agnes and peter so for agnes and peter my fixed cost a standing for agnes p standing for peter so my fixed cost for agnes fixed cost for agnes i'm given a figure of how much i'm given a figure of 60000 i'm given a figure of 60000 what about my cs ratio cs generally stands for contribution divided by sales that is what stands for cs but was i given this contribution to sales ratio i wasn't given but i know very well i can determine that i hope you still remember how to determine your contribution and remember on contribution we noted for you to determine contribution you should be having your total sales minus total variable cost total variable cost that should give you your contribution so come to our case agnes business my total sales was 600000 my total variable cost in our case i was given 480000 peter my total sales 600 but our total variable cost i'm given a figure of 400000 so having that case determining our contribution for agnes i'm having 600 by minus 480 that should give us 120 peter i'm having 600 by 400 which should give us a figure of 200 so after determining our contribution i can determine my cs so what about our cs cs for peter or rather we start with the agnes contribution to sales ratio for agnes i'm having 120000 divided by our sales our sales value we had a figure of 600000 where as for this other person known as peter i'm having 200 divided by 600 so the first case i should be having how many percent that should give us uh 120 divided by 600 so that should give us a figure of 20 percent whereas the other person i should be having 200 divided by 600 that should give us a percentage of 33 and a third percent so having that case i can now comfortably come and say uh i can determine my break even point so that my break even point for agnes business i should be having my fixed cost which are fixed cost in this case we had a fixed cost of how much sixty thousand i'm going to divide by our contribution to sales ratio for agnes would you determine it as 20 percent so that in that case i will be having sixty thousand divided by 20 percent so i'm having a figure of three hundred thousand that is for agnes business where as for peter i should be having a uh, in fact this was a 60000 yeah so that for peter the same case will apply i'm having a fixed cost of 140000 here 140000 
divided by 33 and a third percent. So having that case, I'm having 140,000. I'm going to divide by 33 and a third percent. I'm going to divide by 33 and a third percent, 33 and a third percent, which should give us a figure of 420, 420. So in that case, that is what the examiner wanted me to do, to determine the break-even of Agnes and the break-even point of Peter. We've used this method simply because, as I've told you earlier on, we didn't have the selling price per unit. And that is how you can tackle the break-even point using uh, that method. Then the other question, we are told that the sales volume at which each business will earn a profit of 20 million. The sales volume at which each business will earn a profit of, of which business will earn a profit of 20 million. That is also another concept of break-even point or rather this uh, bit of uh, application of marginal costing. So, suppose you are given a targeted profit. You are told to determine a target profit in value or rather in units. What will you do? Most of the cases an examiner will tell you to determine, say, a target sales, how to get target sales, how to get your target sales in units. To get your target sales in unit, what are you supposed to consider? If you are supposed to get my target sales in units, we'll always be having my fixed cost plus the targeted profit plus the target profit divided by contribution margin. That is the target sales in units. To determine your target sales in value, to determine your target sales in value, target sales in value, I should be having my target sales in value, I'm going to have my fixed cost plus target profit. But this time round, I can have either the two I can have CM times my selling price per unit, or rather, I can have my target sales as fixed cost plus my target profit divided by CS ratio, divided by CS. These are the two main methods that you can have in determining my target sales in value, whereas one determining the target sales in units. So here, the examiner had asked you to determine what? To determine your target sales, to determine your target sales in uh, value. And in that case, I was given a value of how much? I was given a value of 20 million. Remember our figures are in thousand. So in this case, you can also take our figure to be, to be in thousand. You can take our figure to be in thousand because I was told the sales volume at which each business will earn a profit of 20 million. So in this case, you can take it to be in thousand or rather you can just decide to take it to be a million as it is. How do you determine your target sales? Which formula between the two am I going to use? I'm going to use this one because this is where we have a CS ratio. So that was part two of the question. So for which in that case for Agnes, I know very well I'm giving the figures. I should be having my fixed cost, which was 60 million. I've taken it in full now, plus the target profit of 20 million divided by our CS ratio, which was 20%. Whereas for uh, Peter, the case will apply. I should be having my fixed cost, which was given 140,000 or other million plus 20 million divided by our CS ratio, which we had 33 and a third percent. So having that case, the first component that I should be having, six, that should give us 80 million by 20 percent, 80 million divided by 20 percent. I'm having a figure of uh, that is a uh, 80 million divided by 20 percent. I should be having 60.
plus 20 million. That should give us 80 million. I'm going to divide by 20%. So that in that case, I will be having a figure of 400 million. I should be having a figure of 400 million. 400 million. What about the other guy known as Peter? For Peter, I should be having on 40 uh, million plus 20 million divided by 33 and a third percent. 33 and a third percent. So that in that case, I should be having a figure of roughly like 480, 480, 480. So that is our break even point in value and in units. So at any given point, whenever you are told to determine your break even point in units, or rather in this case, we had in value and the aspect of the target sales. So the target sales that uh, Agnes should have is this. And Peter, the target says that he should be having is a figure of that. And then the other point in this case, we were told to determine, I'm not seeing any other thing which we are told to determine except for, for the two. So in that case, my good students, at any given point you are considering this bit, this is what you are supposed to, to tackle. And it has given us a new concept of break-even point. So suppose you have any question, you can always ask us in our portal and up to this juncture, I wish you to join me in the next session whereby we'll be tackling more questions of the same. Thank you very much and let us meet in the next session.